everybody. Happy holidays. Happy post Thanksgiving. I hope everyone had a great weekend or we're in the middle of the weekend, but is having a great holiday weekend. So thank you so much for hanging out. We have John Payne. How are you? Great to see you today. And we have Colette. How are you? So glad to see you. So this is so cool. I'm so glad you guys are here. It's kind of a different time, 8.45, but I had to make sure I eat dinner, health first, right? So today I'm going to be working on her hair, you know, getting into the real, uh, I don't know, like the, the real subtleties of hair. So that's something I'm really going to enjoy sharing with everybody. Uh, a lot of times when you're doing the detail of the hair, it's everything is very transparent and opaque at the same time. So, I mean, you have the same hair mask. You could have some opacity here and then it'll go into transparency and then come back into opacity, which is very interesting. And depending on whether it's a dark background or if it's a light background is what color that hair is going to be. Same hair against a dark background is going to be light same hair against the light background is going to be dark you know so that's basically what we're going to be going over today some of the subtleties bringing the bringing all the flesh in so hey mike deloach how are you all the way from out just outside of atlanta how are you happy thanksgiving weekend to you sir just want to thank god so you know thank god for this opportunity and the apartment and the studio and and the electricity and you guys, I really want to thank God for that. Without him, none of this is possible. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up my reference on the computer. Where are she? Where is she? There she is. Okay, great. Let me get some water. Hey, Mr. Roy, how are you? Great to see you. Happy Thanksgiving weekend, sir. So all the Christmas lights are already taken care of, Roy? <laughs> I know it was a big job. Hey, Zavi, how are you? Great to see you, sir. Happy Thanksgiving weekend, Zavi. So glad you can make it. So I know uh, Zavi, uh, Zavi has been taking the course, so thank you so much for purchasing the course. It's very exciting. And Roy has been putting up his Christmas decorations. I'm going to turn on the fan because it tends to get a little warm, even though it's almost December. Still tends to get a little on the warm side. So I've been airbrushing today and pastel painting now. So pretty, pretty in-depth stuff. Mike Deloach says he's up to his eyebrows in leather projects for Christmas. Oh, great. So you give them away as gifts. One of these days you have to email me some of those leather examples. I would really love to see that, definitely. So that's that's really cool. So that's great. I'm looking forward to that. Perfect. Okay, so let's see. How's the sound and picture quality? Is it doable? I hope. What did I just do with my water? Oh, it's over here. See, there's my water. So we got, so Facebook is interesting. There's like a delay, like sometimes like a four second delay, which is really weird. So if it takes me a couple of seconds to reply to a question, if I see it, it'll probably be four seconds later. If I don't see it and I'm working, then ask the question again, and I'd be much happy, very happy to answer it, you know. Just remind me if I didn't. It's because I was not paying attention. So great to see everybody. That's exciting. Hey, there he is, Mr. Steve, all the way from the UK. How are you, sir? So glad to see you. That is so great. So, uh... Oh, um, 
Steve is actually selling prints of his work, uh, really fantastic paintings. If you uh, go on Facebook and you see the name Addiction Airbrushing, and there would be information where you can actually purchase uh, some prints of his work. Very talented painter. And Zavi says he doesn't give gifts away. If anyone wants a gift from him, uh, they'll have to pay. <laughs> That's funny. So very cool. So, so great group so far. I'm so glad everyone is here. Thank you for hanging out with me on this Saturday of nights. And it's got to make sure. It says here that my, oh, it's not all the way in, perhaps? It says it's not charging. Oh, it is charging, I think. But, oh, it isn't. I guess you have to plug it in for your laptop to charge, right? Okay. That makes sense. Because it would have been a short live stream. <laughs> Because I'm already low on energy, so it's really cool. Ah, thank you so much, Steve. Steve, Steve uh, studies with me, so you know it's always a pleasure to see my students flourish and do so well as he has. You know, so as as my other students. So I have my mall stick. And I have my triangles, and let's get ready to rumble. So, we're going to be working on her hair. So the first thing I want to do is work on some of these kind of very light hairs that are coming out here, right? And if I look at it, it's kind of a light, warm gray. So the first thing I would do is I would get a warm gray, put that down. And maybe I'll warm it up with a little bit of purple, right? A little bit of purple is good, but it has to be a deeper purple color here. Put that right next to it. Maybe it's a little too dark, so we'll put some red, light red, to kind of calm that down. And then we'll take um, one of these triangles here. And so... Where is my scissors? Where are they? Here they are. Great. And we'll just cut this triangle so we could reuse it, right? Just cut it like that. Then we had a clean edge. Nice clean edge. And then we're gonna mix that gray, right? That warm gray actually the cool gray with the purple. And let's see what we can do. And you can see I'm going to actually zoom in so we can really get in there. Let's see. Let me do that with you. I want you to see what I'm doing. And then we'll move this over. So we're going to be working on the camera, camera left of the painting. And then we'll zoom in. Okay, so you can definitely see. Let's see if I could sharpen this up just a tad. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Now, we're just going to... So you can see how certain areas of this hair is more opaque, right? And then we get a transparent area and then an, op an opaque area. That's basically because hair is not like wire. It changes its thickness and, its, and therefore its opacity. Hair is very unpredictable. There we go. And let's 
zoom up, just move up just a tad here. See as I'm working this hair right there. It might be a little thicker in one area and then just thin out in another area. Okay, now we can use this edge here. We'll try it, see how it goes. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So you can see how we can get these like real variations of opacity and this is with pastel so it's not I'm not going in with a pencil or a pen or airbrush this is just utilizing the pastel And of course, this is like a kind of a purplish kind of gray that I mixed up. And let's see here. Come back here. Any questions? Cool. Okay. Any questions, feel free to ask. Always, always excited to help people out. And let's move up over here. Actually, we can just zoom out, perhaps. Okay, and let me just uh, move this down just a little bit because we're not really needing to see the other areas. see what else we can do. Maybe we can darken this a tad. Right there. And let's zoom in again. Move this over. We'll do some of the hairs on top. Great. Okay, maybe we can come down a little bit. Cool. So this is the top part of her hair. And now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to work on doing some of those interesting darks. Now we can use, with the triangle, it's good to use this edge here. See how I can get the smallest thing? I'd like to see someone who's using pastel traditionally to try and get edges like this. And just keep doing that one second rule. And then we could vary the thickness of this hair. And 
you see how the hairs get lost and found. Now it's always good to have the mixture of the background handy, and I'll tell you why. Because now you can refine where that edge is, and that's way too dark. Rather than mix that in, I'm going to use a little bit of a kneaded eraser and kind of lift that up. You never want to kind of blend in the wrong color, right? It's just it's just bad. It's going to actually mix with the rest of your painting. And it's just going to, you know, it's just, it's just going, it's like, it's like putting salt in your, uh, in your food, right? Too much salt, you best take it out rather than just mix it in. So right here we have this little bit of dark and I'm just trying to tap it. I don't want to mix that in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the background color and I'm going to mix it. And you want to make sure you get that color right. So you're just going to really concentrate on getting the right colors. See, I have this gray here, a little bit of cold gray. I'll add that as well. And then when I'm fairly happy, I'm just going to go ahead and with my scissors, I'm going to create my triangle angle. So now we're working on the background. And so even if you're oil painting or airbrushing, you want to have the background mixed up and ready to go. And you can see I could lighten that up a bit. So I'm going to come in with some, some white into my mixture. Lighten this up. No cutting corners here. You work so hard on the painting throughout, you definitely don't want to cut corners at the end. When you did all that hard work. A little dark, so I'll just put in a little more white. So with this, having this mixture, you have a lot of leeway to kind of control the hairs even more. Let's see if we can darken this just a tad. Again, this seems like real teeny tiny un unnecessary detail, but trust me, it really goes a long way. Just taking your, you know, what you have to say about your model and the visual world and everything like that. These little things are very important. These little aspects. Kind of, you go faster, it kind of helps you to get a cleaner line. Then let's zoom back out. You see if you, so you can see exactly what's happening here. There we go. That's much too bright. Let's darken this up. There we go. So these hairs are very, very detailed. Let me work on the focus. Get this focused. Okay. So once again, you're going to see me continue working on these really, really thin hairs. It's very important. And let's see who's here. Mr. Bob, how are you? Great to see you. 
Happy Thanksgiving weekend, my friend. So glad you're here. So Squeeze is here, Mr. Bob. That's great. And Zavi asked me, do I like airbrush or pastel painting better? I think they are two sides of the same coin, Zavi. Very good question, but it's like, um, you know, it's, it's all connected, right? So, uh, you know, I started out as an oil painter, you know, in my studies, and then from oil painting, I went into pastels, and then I did uh, colored pencils for a while, and that was pretty cool. I was really deep into colored pencils. After colored pencils, I went back into pastel painting. And about 10, 12 years ago, I went into airbrushing. And now, you know, I still do the pastel and the airbrush. And I do black and white airbrush and color airbrush. So it's, it's really cool. Everything always comes full circle, you know. Everything that we study and work hard for. It's not for naught. It's always going to come together. So it's hard to say. Um, I would just say that I'm more known as a uh, pastel painter because I've been painting in pastels and exhibiting for many years, you know. So, uh, but yeah, I, I think they're the same. There are different things I like about it. I love that there's no cleanup for pastels, right? I work in pastels, I walk away. Airbrush, you have to clean your airbrushes and all that, so it's a little more in-depth, so that kind of stinks. However, I could, I could add color much faster and much more efficiently in airbrush than I could ever in pastel, right? And, ah, oh, thank you. Mr. Bob says, uh, lots of life in the hair. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And so we're just going to continue uh, working on her hair. Let's see if I can bring this a little bit forward. Maybe that would help. Let's see. There, yeah, I like that. Now we could raise. That's a better angle. That's much better. Okay, maybe I can darken just a tad by, by raising the frame rate. Okay, so so cool. Okay, so I'm going to continue with those those little hairs going around, and some of them actually are thicker over here. Like right over here, we have some nice thick hairs, and let's let's go ahead and and uh, work on that together. Right over here, we have this hair, and it comes out. And I might want to use this edge here for this. And don't worry, it's not perfect. And then you see there's a little bit of uh, a problem with the background here. It's a little, a little dirty. We'll just fix that. So I am using the foam for this, the foam core. Seems like the faster you go, the better. And it's great to have that background color. You can just play with things. And then we could so you don't have to go exactly the way the hair is. And just keep things interesting, you know, it's important. Have like some lost found edges here and there. And 
it's a little dark over here, so maybe we can just thin this out. You want to keep things when it goes to hair. You want to make sure you keep things from being equidistant in the same size because that makes it inorganic and it will not look correct. Just instinctively, it won't look correct for you. And then you can take the white past uh, this background pastel color and you can kind of work on the contours of the hair the way you want and you can see how this edge right here is kind of a little bit on the you know messy side so we can clean that up Yeah, you know, and also it depends on what mood I'm in, Zavi. If, if I'm in an airbrush mood, then airbrush is the thing. But there are some days I'm just in a pastel mood or, uh, you know, pencil mood or black and white mood or color mood, right? It's, it really depends on, you know, my changing moods in a sense. So these little things, they might seem like very small, but it really makes a difference when you're going from the, you know, the stage of your painting where you're working on, you know, just, just working on getting everything sort of situated and doing the block in. Now you're doing the individual details. So we're going, we're going to do individual details in her face like the lips and the ear and so and the hair as well so right now on these edges i'm really working on just cleaning things up making things look you know much more natural hey colette colette says what mood were you in when you did that fabulous new portrait in color i don't know thank you for that colette colette's referring to the airbrush painting i did in color uh, that I'm working on it's still a work in progress but you know you just it's weird you know you wake up and you have a certain frame of mind and well that's kind of the way I am you know I I never know you know why I work in so many mediums because you know one day I'll wake up and say I'm not going to paint in that medium for a while. I'm not going to paint in color for a while. Or I'm going to start painting exclusively in color for a while. It's just whatever, you know, whatever kind of suits me at the moment. And I, God always bless me with the ability to just pick up something new and just kind of run with it when it comes to painting, of course. Painting and drawing. Like, that will be just some days where I'm just in a digital art mood, right? You know, when you learn different mediums, what it gives you is options. And, you know, what I learned in life from people telling me is that options are one of the best things to have, right? People say that money isn't happiness, but money gives you options. And that makes a lot of sense. So that's what, you know, I think the more mediums that you do learn and try and master, when you're when you're in that inclination is a good thing but as far as color it's funny because a lot of people actually don't know that i work in color they have this opinion that i'm only doing black and white because i'm afraid of color and i find that really funny it's like what have you done for me lately kind of attitude and i've been working in color since i was a kid I'm talking like 14 years old oil painting on a serious level. And so, no, I mean, 
It's just whatever it is. If I stop working in color, it's not because I'm afraid of it. It's because for some reason, working in black and white really works for me right now or at that moment. Or if I just decided to work in color like today in airbrush, then that just suited me. And for whatever reason, I can't always put my finger on it. But no, I worked in airbrush and color for many years. It's only since, and I still, you know, I never really stopped working in airbrush, but just publicly I'll start showing it again. But one of the reasons why I actually went into black and white and teaching black and white exclusively, because black and white is 85% of a good painting. That's what Andre said. So, you know, why I teach in black and white is because if you master black and white, you can master color very shortly. But if you master color, you don't master black and white, you're going to be in trouble. So as you can see, I'm starting to work on her hairline, you know, the best I can. Mr. Patrick, where are you? I don't see Patrick. Oh, John Diekman, how are you today, my friend? So someone says, hi, Patrick. I don't see Patrick. I see Mr. Diekman all the way from Wisconsin. How are you, sir? Now, is Patrick here? Are you here, sir? I didn't see you. And if you are here and I didn't see you, hello and sorry I missed you. Uh, oh, John Diekman's doing great, thank goodness. Uh, how was your Thanksgiving, sir? Hopefully really well. Oh, you thought you saw him. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Very cool. All right, so... And, you know, the great thing about pastel is that you can, or any medium, is that, you know, you, you learn and you, you, you do things the way other artists do, and then you get to the point where you say, you know what, I'm going to do it the way I want to do it. And that I always do recommend. Now I'm working with a pastel pencil, trying to get some of these lighter hairs that are here. Kind of going up towards the back of her head. We do some of these lighter. The hairs are catching the light at a certain way. more of a golden color so I'm going to try this color let's see how this goes yeah this looks better and I can come back in with black kind of really define these hairs And then it gets real orange over here and a dark terracotta kind of color. Kind of just ends up right here, kind of goes down, kind of connects. Same thing here. Let's put in some life into these lights. You know, you want to see some of these errant hairs, what they're doing, kind of put them in. The only people who are going to see it are the ones up close, but you're just, you know, wanting to do the best job that you can. Even though many people won't see it, you still do it anyway. Oh, the 
traditional huge meal call. And John said he went to his sister, bought some food, and left the leftovers there. <laughs> That's cool. And we're not trying to solve, you know, solve the equation right away. We're just kind of going back and forth, kind of working this in. I can see there's more color in the dark, so I'll take this terracotta color, and I'll just do a glaze, right? Just a glaze. What that does, it just puts some life into her hair, because very rarely is there, like, deep darks, uh, deep blacks. You know, black is there, you mix black. I love black as a color, but a lot of times, you know, the black isn't really the richest black in the world, so it has a lot more color in there. And notice how I'm holding the pastel pencil further back. I can always come back in with a darker dark if I need to, so nothing's written in stone. But just continuing to work out everything. And here on the sides, those are darker. So I can actually glaze over that, right? So you can glaze over any color. Any color can be an opaque. Any color could be a transparent, depending on how you apply it. Transparent, opaque. Colors are not inherently transparent or opaque. You can definitely change them to your liking. See how I can enrich that color and change it just by glazing it with this sort of uh, beautiful Van Dyke brown. You don't want to get obsessed with the hair, but you know, you just keep working in some of those hairs, like a forest at the edge of the forest. Some go further in, some go further out, ready? Here we can darken a hair there, kind of rediscover it over here. It's a beautiful work in progress. And with hair, you just want to be tenacious and you just want to stick with it. You want to build it. You don't want to try and solve it right away because it's not going to happen. And you don't want to paint hair as if you're painting, you know, the eyes because it's a whole different ball game. If you try and exactly paint hair, you're going to go crazy. So you just want to generalize, get the at the less specific areas. And it's great when you explore the hair in different areas. Uh, you find out that this tool works really well, so you start using this tool. And that's the great thing about just painting as much as you can because you learn so much just by doing See how this looks. Okay, great, because now we're working on this part of the hair, you know, which is really good. Oh, yeah, so, <laughs> so Colette says, order a pizza. John says, I don't need any food. I quit smoking last year after 38 years. Congratulations. And now I need to remove the waistline 
from stopping the nicotine munchies. Yeah, so it's a big, it is definitely a, a big adjustment, right? It's not easy. And we're going to go down a little bit more. I want us to concentrate on the hair at the nape of her neck there. See that? So yeah, I mean, I think something like this is really important to dedicate a live stream to because, you know, it's, it's something like, you know, these little things are like the master's touch, right? You, think you don't see this too often because a lot of people won't, won't teach this stuff. And you can see how the reason why the hair is so transparent because light's going through it, am I right? And that's what's happening. So I'd rather just dedicate a live stream just to this because I know that people will get something from it and maybe apply this to their own work. And that to me is exciting. And of course we have this tool as well as the pastel pencil. And where did that go? There it is. stick with that hair for a little while. Now right here, this part of the hair right underneath her ear is much more transparent. So I'm going to come back in with that transparent color that we started in the very beginning, that, that purplish cool gray. And let's uh, go ahead and mix that with a little bit of the background color. And let's try and add a little transparency to this. And then we can come back in with the dark. And What's really cool is that we can actually start working on softening the edge here. These are like kind of visual effects where there's kind of like a, an edge, like a halo around the color next to a background. And I see that here as well. So the takeaway from this is that I, I want you all to, you know, when you're working on hair, you know, don't get involved too early in the painting, but when it's time, just make sure that you, you give it the attention that it deserves because it's very important, especially these edges here. In some areas you have more of these visual effects where the background kind of mixes even more with the background, with the hair. But one thing I will tell you is that airbrush and pastel are sister arts. 
meaning that they work together really well. I mean, I'm coining that, that expression myself. I feel that they both work perfectly with one another, much better than colored pencils and airbrush, or uh, I really think it works really, really well. They, they really uh, complement one each other perfectly, complement each other perfectly. And then once again, we can come in with this dark here, trying to work out some of these hairs coming in. Like I said, you don't have to solve every equation. So you just, you know, you work and then you move on. And it's great because as you're working, you'll see things in other areas of the painting. Okay, so let's work uh, just underneath the zygomatic bone and just above the masseter or the mandible. The masseter is the is different, but right here is the zygomatic bone and here is the mandible. So there's an indentation and a fossa or like a gap here. That's why it gets that's why this gets so dark. And then down here is the mandible, but underneath here is like a uh, it's light because as those two areas are pushing in, this area is being pushed out. So let's look at that together and see if we could, you know, start to put in some of these kind of golden lights right in here. We have pretty much like three, one, two, three, right? And then move on. And I can see I can warm these up, and I will. And anatomy is so important because you want to understand why these things are happening. Not just trust your eye and say, well, why is it happening? Because that's what I see. That shouldn't be good enough. And so what I'm doing is just little, little points of light here that have spaces between them so I can create another visual effect as it gets lighter and creating creating some nice transitions. Oh, you see that happens? And that happens sometimes when you accidentally pick up a color on the, uh, the palette. So I'm just going to not blend that in, right? And I'm just going to tap this until it goes away. You don't want to blend that in. It's going to muddy everything up. So if you leave that there, it'll change everything eventually. So that's a good takeaway from today's lesson. See that? So now that, that's really good. That really works. Here, we definitely can bring in this light color here. And as you do things right and really pay attention to what's happening, her likeness will appear. I love that. I love that when you do the right thing, things happen naturally, organically. And you see how this dark area is a little too strong. You just 
trying to bring that over. And of course right here you can see this is the uh, the mental protuberance here and then on top of that is the mental fat compartment and so that's a rounded form but when you see this kind of uh, straight line that's right above the uh, mental protuberance and the mental fat that's called the uh, orbicularis oris and it's a round muscle that goes around the mouth that's why orbicularis means orbit oris means mouth so that's pretty much where that comes from. And then right here, I am a little, uh, a little bit overzealous here. So I can just kind of calm that down as we go there. And then you can see this really kind of softens her up. So I'm using a kneaded eraser to kind of lift up the color I don't want, and then we're going to put the color in I want. How is that advantageous? Is that uh, you're not fighting that color, so you're getting rid of the color you don't want, sort of plowing the field. Now in the airbrush world, you have to worry about something called blue shift, but blue shift you can make work for you, uh, but definitely you have liberties in pastel that you would never have in another medium. Again, this right here is just super, super dark. It's just showing up too dark here. And I'm just gonna lighten it up for now. Especially right here, just as it comes. So here we have the corner of the mouth. This comes down. You can see that the kneaded eraser can work as a tool to kind of lift up any tone that you don't want. It's your ability to take up that layer that's right on top, and that's great. So it's sort of like, you know, using using the scratching technique for those, uh, you know, airbrush artists out there. So there's a lot more area right here in the zygoma going into the zygomatic bone. And you see how I have this kind of chintzy. So I need to extend this. And I can do that uh, by working on the uh, kneaded eraser to pull this away. So you might ask, you know, Tim, how do you know how to do all this stuff, you know? Many, many years, decades upon decades of working in pastel, just knowing how to manipulate it, know what it's going to do. Uh, there's really any, uh, too many surprises in pastel at this stage in my career. So I know if I'm going to be using the needed eraser or the colored pen pastel pencils, Senelier's, different brands, what they're going to do and why. But yeah, you see as I enlarge this zygomatic bone area, it kind of really softened her up a lot. And then, so we're looking at where the planes of the face, right? So you have the side plane, then you have the front plane. So we have this side plane coming down here. And so if I'm looking, now I'm looking a little more intently, I can see that the front plane, 
actually is a little bit larger than what I had, and then what that does is kind of shortens up the side plane. See that? Oh, thank you. Mr. Steve says, this is why my work is on another level. She looks, she's looking amazing. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that, Steve. Thank you so much. So, as we can see, this side plane was definitely, was too big. And so now that we kind of enlarged the front frontal plane, now the side plane is kind of falling into, into place. So it's interesting. Pastel has been called a drawing medium. It's been called a painting medium. What I think is the best marriage between drawing and painting, and uh, and it's what painting wish you could do, is what pastel can do, because I could move from drawing techniques to paint to oil painting techniques. Uh, it's really great. So here is the mental fat on top of the mental protuberance. And this of course is the mentalis. I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Might be mistaken. Okay, so since we're kind of making sure these planes are okay, let's see how far this goes out here. It kind of tilts up. And then we can just change the color, but what we want to do is kind of definitely try and get that shape correctly. So with pastel, you don't have to worry about blue shifts. You have the ability to apply color, just like oils, just like other mediums, just like airbrush, but with no blue shift. You have quick and easy cleanup. So right here, you see we have what is called the Alar uh, cartilage. And you see how you have this shape here. It's not a mistake. That's where the alar cartilage is uh, is right underneath the skin, right? And it kind of has like a wing shape on both sides. So the way the nose is actually created is that it starts in three. It's three definite sections: the nasal bones, the the lateral cartilage and then the alar cartilage. And if you look closely, you'll see that light is hitting the nose along this area three different ways because they're three different forms. And definitely get yourself a mole stick when you're doing pastels. Not an airbrush. You don't need a mole stick for airbrush because one of your it just doesn't work. I tried it. Then while I'm here, maybe I can shape in the bottom lip a bit better. Since we're here, let's go ahead. So we have something here called the retro opicularis oculi fat. And what it is is there is a fat compartment on the uh, outer edge of the uh, of the eye socket, above the eye above the upper eyelid, below the eyebrow. 
so it comes out. And as it comes out, as in this case, we see more light because it's facing the light a little bit more as it comes out with that back compartment right here. Okay, I'm just going to go stretch and get some water. I'll be right back. Actually, maybe I'll turn the kettle on. So where my pastel, when I do my pastel live streams, they're not in the same spot, so it's a little more difficult for me to get situated and comfortable. Oh, thank you, Zavi. Zavi says she looks real. I appreciate that so much. Um, so definitely, you know, as I'm working here, it's so much easier than airbrush because for me to add a color, I can just mix it and just glaze it. But if I'm going to add a color in airbrush, in this case, a lot of times, what I would do is kind of uh, add a bluish white to kind of wash it out and then go in with color. It's very interesting. So it's a different science when you're working in color in the airbrush, but in pastels, you don't even have to worry about that. But I do do that. And that's how you get, you know, an opaque application. So it comes a time when you're working in airbrush that you can't just continue working uh, just transparent when it comes in color. In black and white, you could work transparently the whole time, no problem. But when you're working in color, there comes a time where you have to actually come in with, you know, opaques. And what I would do is I would take a white, a little bit of orange, spray over it, kind of uh, create uh, a cloudiness, and then come back in with darker colors. So I'm lightening the colors and then darkening, lightening and darkening. And that's what you do when you work in airbrush and color. But that only works when you have a really good underpainting like I do on Wednesday nights, right? That's like the perfect underpainting for pastels, for oils. That's the difference. That's the key. So as this comes down here, you see I have this beautiful salmony pink color. I just love that color. I'll put this triangle aside to get myself a fresh triangle. And now I'm going back to the foam core. Hey Nick, how are you my friend? How's everything? Good to see you. So now, you know, I have this kind of uh, wonderful salmon color, but I'm going to be adding an orange. Not an orange itself, but an orange pastel. So I'm just 
going to put that there, and I want to have like a little bit of an orange color shift because here it's very fleshy and and everything like that. But when we're going up here in the forehead, it has uh, a little less of the fleshiness, so it's more on the kind of dull orangey color. Oh, definitely got to move this down. Nope, move it up, right? Move on up to the side. Okay. Nope, this way. No, I'm good. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Maybe a little bit higher. Get away from the holidays. Happy holidays. As you see, I'm, I'm in no rush to complete this. I will complete it, that's my goal, but I'm not going to speed the process. And now I'm just glazing in this orangey salmon color. I have this color, let's kind of bring it down. It's orangey, semi color. And notice how that orangey, semi color works like, looks like yellow here and looks orange there. It's that simultaneous contrast. That works both in value and in, in color. Wow, thank you, Nick. Nick says the pastel work is unreal. I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for that. Very encouraging. Yeah, I'm just going to kind of work in and out. Try and get the... the patchwork there. As one value is kind of moving along another value. Oh, I definitely can move down now. Let's see. Show a little more. See if I got that right. Great. So now I could work on this area with you. Let me get a sip of water. And everything is, you know, just like when I do my Wednesday night with the airbrush and the black India ink, it's all about relative values and everything like that. You know, that's why you work the whole painting up together, right? And we're always moving around. So here are the superorbital eminences. So we definitely want to kind of describe the form by painting the adjacent forms. Because many times the adjacent forms describe the forms better than the forms itself. Am I right? So that happens a lot. So that's what we're doing. To describe the superorbital eminence here, we're going to have to describe the frontal bone and the frontalis muscle. 
right here. There's two front taluses, one on each side. And that kind of controls, you know, your surprise look, right? Along with Proceris, riding right, right over here. So you see how we have these uh, very low contrast uh, pathways of tone, and that's so important. And yeah, you do want to have those pathways. So, you know, as someone as young as this photo was taken of this young lady here, you don't see the Proceris, but as we get older, the Proceris starts showing itself, especially when we, we crinkle our nose and, uh, and then when we uh, kind of act surprised, we start seeing these lines here uh, with the, with the frontalis, the two of them. Again, so this area is probably a little more in the orange. So notice now if I have this sort of triangle, and the triangle is like kind of a horrible shape, don't try and use it. Just fix it, right? Just go ahead and go like this, and now I have a beautiful angle. Now I can use it to my advantage and exactly the way I want. So it's a little bit more on the orange side. And I'm just going to create some of this kind of orangey shape here. Kind of just disappear towards the filtrum here. Same thing here. Kind of. So with pastels, I can. And you can do this with acrylic, but I mean with airbrush, but it's a different thinking you have to have when you're working in airbrush. You can't. You can't think like, uh, you know, mixing a big batch of color. And that's why a lot of airbrush paintings tend to have a very flat look because they're not using all the different variations of color like I am right here in pastel. It's a lot more simple, but that's actually possible in airbrush, but it's a different way of thinking. now you can see how now you're starting to see the super orbital eminences that are above the eye sockets so the forehead is far from just being you know one big shape there's there's these muscles the frontalis right and then you have the frontal bone, and then you have the superorbital eminences, you have the nasal eminence, you have the temporal ridge and the temporal bone. So that's all going on in that forehead that many people will not really look and see exactly what's happening. But it's hard if you don't know it's there, and that's, that's one of the things I teach, is that the anatomy is everywhere, not just, you know, with the eyes, nose, and mouth, but everywhere, anatomy is causing everything to happen. Everything that is happening, whether it's a contour, or it's a dark, or it's a light, if it's in a portrait, it has to do with anatomy. So it's almost 10 o'clock, so I'm gonna stop now, I gave you uh, gave you guys an hour and 15 minutes. I really appreciate it. So it gives us something to do next week, right? So as you can see, as I am shaping her face a little better, you know, by knowing where, by really seeing where exactly uh, there's a lot of frontal planes and everything like that. Let's see if I could just get this. Hey, what's up there, Mr. Brad? Good to see you. And let's move this over. And I want to get this as straight as possible. 
I have the 50 millimeters, so we may not get to see all of her, but we'll try, right? Let's see. Okay. Like I said, this is not my number one setup, so. Great. Now I'll just go here. There we go. So this is where we are thus far, and I'm really enjoying working with this with everybody, and thank you so much. So we did work on some of those transparent hairs there, and also trying to come back in with the anatomy, uh, with her nose, with her forehead, stuff like that. And then next week, I think we're going to start coming in with some really nice, cool colors, some, some greens and purples and blues. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. So that's going to be great. Thank you so much, Bob. Great to see you. Thank you so much, Brad. Zavi, always a pleasure. Steve, thanks for coming. Nick, always a pleasure, sir. Uh, we have John Diekman and Colette and uh, John Payne. Thank you, guys. Uh, if anyone I missed, I do apologize. Let me see. I want to make sure I get everyone. Mike Deloach, great to see you. Zavi, Roy. You guys are all so great. I just want to say thank you so much for making my Saturday special. It's because of you guys. And Colette, of course, thank you so much. And everyone, take care of yourselves. God bless. And I will talk to you on Wednesday night.